The Porsche 911 GT3 Touring is a 10 out of 10 car. You've got to have the manual though. There are plenty of other choices to make when buying a GT3 Touring, but that's the only one that really matters. Manual is a no cost option here, just as it is on the regular GT3. Both cars weigh an identical 1,418 kilograms with the PDK a penalty only a 17 kilograms. All GT3s, regardless of the gearbox or rear wing status, cost 127,000 pounds. Other options do add additional money. You can have the PC CB composite brakes on the Touring model of an extra 6,000 pounds, full carbon bucket seats for an extra 3,700 pounds, and you can make it as hardcore as the GT3 with the wing. There is no stiffer suspension. It's a commonly held misconception that the Touring is a backed off a GT3, fitted with softer springs, dampers, and a more forgiving a setup. It's not so. This is a cosmetic package. The big wing goes and it's in place comes the pop-up spoiler from the regular 911 plus a unique engine cover. The exterior a bright work is literally that aluminium as standard rather than black and inside a leather is standard rather than the race text. Obviously you can shift all this around on the configurator, get your touring as tight and tied down as you desire or alternatively load it up with the matrix LED lights at an extra £2,000, the rear camera option at an extra £800 and the Bose surround sound system at an extra £1,000 so the characteristic fits the name a bit better. Well I'm sure the next question would be how much power does it have? Power is not really in want in this engine. It's about purity and noise and response. And those things matter more now than ever because those are so rare. I can tell you that the 4 litre flat 6 has an extra 10 horsepower in the 992 over the previous 991 for a total of 503 brake horsepower. But that's not remarkable. It revs clean through to 9,000 revs per minute with a peak power at 8,400 revs per minute which is remarkable. It's 346 pound-feet of torque at 6,100 revs per minute is a modest amount, arriving very late by the turbo standard, but getting in the car, having the rev counter in pride and place and seeing that 12 o'clock point at 5,000 revs per minute and working out that that's only halfway around the markings, well, if you still think petrol has a place, these things do matter. Well, the question is, don't you mind that the manual is half a second slower to 62 miles per hour? Well, not for an instant. A twin clutch launch control starts are great for showing off and require a no skill whatsoever. But whether you hit 62 miles an hour in 3.4 seconds or 3.9 makes no difference to me. For a matter of fact, that the Touring not having to pull a plank through the air is a fraction quicker at top speed. The numbers don't really matter and that's an important point to make because if they do, go and buy yourself an electric car. You are looking at a Touring for the wrong reasons then. This is a car for the feel. So how does it feel? Well, a bloody awesome. For starters, it's usual to have a car that feels special without drawing too much attention. You drive it, you don't feel like everyone is looking, and yet the sensation you get from it is right up there. The engine uh, chunters and rattles slightly at idle. The clutch has a spinny action. You need some throttle to pull away. There is no anti-stall. It's a car as a car used to be. So there you go. That was the 911 a GT3 a Touring. And if you liked our video, don't forget to give us the thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe.